So in this video, we're going to be building these alert boxes. Uh, these are styled, obviously, with CSS. We're then going to build a very small jQuery plugin to handle being able to close them, which is obviously optional. You can just have them as styled elements on your page if you need to. So you can see that at the top of the page, we've got one large uh, alert here. Uh, and these use exactly the same styles. They fit to the container that they're placed into. Uh, we've got this X here, which we can click and just get rid of, and then that disappears. Uh, the same with these as well. So they work in exactly the same way. So we're going to start off by building this very basic page layout. We're going to have a left side of a page and a right side of a page. If you're using some kind of grid system, these will fit nicely into that. So let's go ahead and start to do this, build up the styles, and then we'll start writing the code that we need these to be able to close as well. So we're gonna start off with not much code at all here. Uh, all I have is a basic document. I've linked in a style sheet, which we're gonna be writing all of our CSS in. And I've got an empty JavaScript folder here, which we're going to be placing our very small jQuery plugin into. So let's start first of all by building a very basic container for this left and right hand side of the page, and then we'll get going. So let's build a container here, and we're gonna have a class of left in here, and we're gonna have a class of right. This really doesn't matter, we're just using this as a test. So this is gonna be the left hand side, this is gonna be the right hand side. Obviously at the moment, not much going on here. So inside of app.css then, uh, we're going to just start, I guess, by prepping our page. So let's uh, set the margin to zero on our body. And that's just going to mean that our alerts will sit nicely at the top. Uh, let's choose a font family here. Uh, we'll go for Helvetica. And that's a sans serif, so we'll provide a sans serif fallback. Let's set the font size to 1M and let's give a line height of 1.2. So that's not changed much, just the visual elements, uh, mainly of the typography. So let's style up this container that we have then. Uh, we're gonna give this a margin of 20 pixels, so everything that sits inside just pops out a little bit like that. And for the container left element, and also the container right element, really this could just be one class because we're doing the same thing to both of them. We're gonna float this left and we're gonna give a width on this of 50%, and we're gonna give 10 pixel padding. Now, this isn't gonna look right. It's not gonna sit next to each other, and the reason for that is that we've got 50% width, and because we've got the 10 pixel padding on this, uh, it's not quite gonna work out. So what we do is we can make use of the CSS calc function to take away 20 pixels from 50%. That's because we've got 10 pixel padding on the left, 10 pixel padding on the right, and that gives us the following. So let's just uh, inspect these while we're here, just so we can uh, go along with what we're working with. You can see here that these are just sit, uh, sitting nicely next to each other within this container. So let's add some content very quickly to this page. Uh, I guess we could add a header in here, left side of the page, amazing. And we'll add the same for the right as well. Uh, let me just copy these over just so we eat a little bit quicker here. And we'll have a paragraph here uh, with some lorem ipsum in. And we'll have a paragraph here as well with some lorem ipsum. We'll do uh, 10 maybe. And then we'll do another paragraph here with a little bit more. So we now have the following. And that's it. So we're going to be creating our alert box. One is going to be at the top here. One's going to be just under this header and one's going to be just under this header. And we can see how this interacts on the page. The reason that creating all this content is important to see how the end result uh, actually works with the content on your page, just so we know that it's going to work properly when we come to use it. So let's start styling up the first alert box then. So um, inside of our CSS file, we want to define a class called alert. Um, but let's start with the markup, actually, and we'll start with the alert that's going to be on the top of the page, and this will naturally fit into the container it's put within. So let's create a div with a class of alert just here, and we'll go ahead and we'll just enter some text in here. 
So we're working on the site this weekend, some random message. So that's going to look like the following, not much at the moment. And we'll be adding our close button in here as well in a moment. So then let's start with styling up the basic alert uh, styles. This is going to apply to any alert, whether it's an error, success alert, or a default alert. So we're going to give this a padding of 20 pixels. We're going to give this a background color. This is going to be our default color, which is just going to be a gray color. We're going to set the color of the text to white, and we're going to set the font size here to 0.9 M's. So let's go ahead and check this out. And it looks like this. So that wasn't too difficult at all. We've got our basic alert box working and uh, th that's the basic style for this. So let's go ahead now and target uh, the um, close button within this. So what we want to do is we want to actually create an anchor here. The href can just be a hash because we're going to be handling this with JavaScript uh, in a bit. And we can go ahead and give this a class of close. Now for the content inside of this, we're going to use times, which gives us a nice X and we get the following. So we've got that X there. We can click it, but obviously it's not doing anything. So we need to style this up, get rid of the default color, get rid of the underline here. Uh, and that's pretty straightforward. The probably the most difficult part is positioning this. So within the alert uh, class, we're going to target the close class and we can go ahead and uh, set the stars for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to float this right. We're going to set the color of this to the same as the text color within our alerts. Uh, we're going to take away the text decoration, which is that underline you see on links by default. And let's take a look at what this looks like at the moment. So it, it's kind of in position. The only problem I have with this is that the area to click is very small. You can see my cursor change here. So what I want to do is give this a little bit of padding um, and then position it correctly so we have a little bit of a bigger area to click. So I'm going to set the padding to 10 pixels. That's going to solve our problem, but it's going to give us a little bit of a positioning issue. You can see here now that the area to click is a lot bigger, and that's uh, particularly useful for mobile devices or uh, any kind of uh, smaller device where a user has maybe a touch screen and they need to press it with their finger. So to uh, combat this, I'm just going to set the top to minus 10 pixels, and I'm going to set the right to minus 10 pixels. Let's go ahead and refresh. Nothing seems to be happening, and the reason for this is the default positioning of this. So what we want to do is set the position to relative, and what that's going to do is allow us to give, give it their minus values. So we've now got our alert uh, close button with a bigger click area. And you can go ahead and adjust this if you want it a little bit bigger as well, or if, or if you want to move this out a little bit, whatever you want to do. But we've got the basic styling here. So what we're going to do now then is we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it underneath this header. Let's just re-indent this and we'll do the same for this one as well. And let's change the text to reflect which kind of alert we want to uh, output here. So the first one is going to be a success. So I'm going to say success, your settings were saved. And then down here, we're going to say whoops, something went horribly wrong. So you can automatically see that these are fitting within this container really nicely. So we already know that these can be used at the top of the page if we want, uh, or we can just use these within containers. It works exactly the same way due to the way that we've styled it. But now what we want to do is apply an additional class, for example, success, or for this error, error, and that's going to allow us to uh, change the background color of this to suit the type of error. And that's really straightforward. All we need to do is say error, uh, alert.error, and then we just change the background color. So let's change this to FF7777. That's going to give us a, a sort of ready pink color. And then we can target alert.success and we'll change the background color here to 55AA44 which is going to give us a nice green color. So 
we've tackled the actual positioning of the close button, the actual container, the background colors for different types of alerts. But now what we need to do is go on and look at actually how we uh, close this element. We're going to be using CSS transitions to handle this rather than relying on jQuery to actually uh, transition this away. And uh, we'll get these fully functional so a user can actually close them. So in the next part, we'll be handling the JavaScript side of this.